Chapter 13, Bert's Burgers. Soon Zoe noticed she was running, but her short little legs were no match for the oldest, taller kids who were soon barging past her so they could be first in the queue at the burger van to stuff their faces at lunch. Zoe shielded Armitage with her hand. She had been knocked to the ground in the school corridor so many times before. At last she made it out into the relative safety of the playground. She kept her head down, hoping not to be recognised. However, there was only one way out of the playground onto the main road. Every day there was the same grimy beaten up burger van parked outside, which had Burt's Burgers emblazoned across it. Even though the food from the van was horrible, the school dinners were even more nauseating, so most of the kids took the least worst option and queued up outside the van for their lunch. Bert was as unsavoury as the burgers he served. The self-styled chef always wore the same filthy striped top and grease-encrusted jeans, which he wore low, below his giant belly. Over the top hung a bloody overall. The man's hands were always filthy, and his thick mop of hair was covered in flakes of dandruff the size of Rice Krispies. Even his dandruff had dandruff. The flakes would drop into the deep fat fryer, causing it to hiss and spurt whenever he leaned over it. Bert would sniff constantly, like a pig snuffling in mud. No one had ever seen his eyes, as he always wore the same pitch black wraparound sunglasses. His false teeth rattled in his mouth whenever he spoke, causing him to whistle involuntarily. School legend had it that they had once fallen out of his mouth into a bap. Bert's burger van didn't offer much of a menu. Burger in a bap, 79p. Burger, only 49p. Bap, only 39p. And there were no restaurant stars awarded as yet. The food was just about edible if you were absolutely starving. You had to pay an extra 5p for a squirt of ketchup, though it didn't look or taste much like ketchup. It was brown and had little black bits in it. If you complained, Bert would shrug and mutter breathlessly, It's my own special recipe, my dears. To Zoe's horror, Tina Trotz was already there, right at the front of the queue. If she hadn't been bunking off a lesson anyway, she would surely have intimidated her way to the front. Spotting her, Zoe put her head down even further so that all she could see was the tarmac but her head wasn't far enough down to go unrecognised. Rat girl! shouted Tina. Zoe popped her head up to see the long line of kids all looking at her. Some of her classmates were now in the queue as well and all started pointing and laughing. Soon it seemed like the whole of the school was laughing at her. <laughs> Never had laughter sounded so cold. Zoe looked up for a moment. Hundreds of little eyes stared at her, but it was the figure of Bert, hunched over in his van, whose face she was drawn to. His nose was twitching, and a large gloop of slobbering saliva fell from the corner of his mouth into Tina's bap. Zoe couldn't go home. Her stepmother would be at the flat watching daytime TV, smoking fags and stuffing her face with prawn cocktail crisps. If Zoe told her why she had been suspended, there was no way she would be able to keep Armitage. Most likely Sheila would instantly exterminate him with her big heavy foot. Zoe would have to peel him off the sole of her stepmother's furry pink slipper. Quickly, Zoe considered her options. One, go on the run with Armitage and hold up banks like Bonnie and Clyde and go out in a blaze of glory. Two, both have plastic surgery and then go and live in South America where no one would know them. Three, tell her dad and stepmother that it was adopt a rodent week at school and there was absolutely nothing to worry about. Four, claim that Armitage was not a real rat, but an animatronics one that she had made in science class. Five, say that she was training the rodent for some top secret spy work for the intelligence service. Number six, give Armitage a white hat and paint him blue and pretend he was a toy smurf. Seven, make two hot air balloons out of her stepmother's gigantic bra, 
one large and one small, and fly off the roof to another country. Eight, hijack a mobility scooter and speed off to safety. Nine, invent and build a dematerialization machine and beam herself and Armitage to safety. Uh, this may have been a teeny bit too complicated to achieve. Uh, 10, just go to Raj's shop and have some sweets. Unsurprisingly, Zoe chose the last option. Ah, Miss Zoe, proclaimed Raj as she opened the door to his shop. The bell rang as she entered. Ting! Shouldn't you be in school, Miss Zoe? Raj asked. Y yes, I should, muttered Zoe, downcast. She felt as if she was about to burst into tears. Raj rushed out from behind his counter and gave the little ginger girl a hug. What's the matter, young lady? He asked, pressing her head to his big, comfy belly. It was so long since anyone had given Zoe a hug. Unfortunately, though, her braces got caught on his woolen cardigan, and for a moment she was stuck to him. Oh dear, said Raj, let me just detangle myself. <laughs> he gently prized his cardigan from out of the metal. Sorry, Raj. No problem, Miss Zoe. Now, tell me, he began again. What on earth has happened? Zoe took a deep breath and then told him. I've been suspended. No, you are such a well-behaved child. I don't believe it. It's true. Whatever for? Zoe thought it might be easier to show him, so she reached into her breast pocket and pulled out her rat. <laughs> Screamed Raj. He scuttled away and clambered up on top of the counter. There he stood for quite a while, screaming. <laughs> I don't like mice, Miss Zoe, please, please, Miss Zoe, please, I beg you, put it away. Don't worry, Raj, it's not a mouse. No? No, it's a rat. Then Raj's eyes bulged and he let out a deafening scream. 